all please starting with my right hand side with Dr. Chapmas. Just identify yourself. Jim Walsh. Len Galino. Mike Tranfalia. First order of business tonight is to review and hopefully approve the minutes from the May 23rd, 2006 meeting. Uh, did everybody receive those? Everybody had a chance to review them? Any comments on those? No comments? Can I have a motion to approve those, please? So moved. Seconded. All in favor? Minutes from um, May 23rd are approved. The next order of business is to review old business, which is to hear the request of uh, Ms. Welch at 168 Two Lights Road, tax, tax map U15, lot 67, for a conditional use permit to operate a home business, specifically for the retail sale of homemade goods. We had um, had this on the agenda last time. The applicant uh, came forward, and the board voted to table uh, a determination on this matter to this month to allow for a submission of additional materials and further deliberation of the issues. Uh, we have received from the applicant, and as I understand it, a packet of pictures. Is that correct, Ms. Well? That's correct. Okay. And um, we also have received a couple letters that everyone should see. One is a um, a letter from Mr. Boxer, who was here last time, uh, conditionally agreeing to the application. And then I think there was another email too, Lori. Can't seem to put my hands on that. Yes, from um, Mr. Bruce Munger. Uh, the neighbors at uh, 175 Two Lights Road uh, <coughs> expressing their support for the application. So I believe that's all the new information we have before us. Does the applicant want to approach the podium and just, yes. I'd like to request if there's any objection from members of the board or from the audience before we start, whether uh, if there are any objections to me sitting and hearing and voting today. If uh, I think there will be discussion and that noted before we start. Thank you for bringing that to uh, our attention. Um, I have no objection to that. I assume no one else on the board does. Does the, appli do you have, the applicant have any objection to Dr. Mend uh, excuse me. Uh, Dr. Chapman's presiding over this hearing. He was not on the panel the last time. He has reviewed the transcript, your application, and he's been out to your property to see what's out there. Um, so he's uh, familiar with the complete hearing from watching the tape of the last proceeding. So um, I guess the question is, are you, do you consent to him presiding over this application? Thank you. Does anyone else want to speak to that issue? Would you mind going to the podium so I can hear you, please? Sure. Um, the, the only question I had at this point is, do you Not have any... Applicant. No, I don't. Do, you don't have any objection to Dr. Chapman's being presiding over this tonight? No, I don't. Okay, great. Then I didn't need to hear you. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. All right, with that piece of uh, procedural business out of the way, the applicant like to just update us as to where we stand today? Okay. Well, last month... I thought that one of the reasons to table was so that each of the board members would have the opportunity to come to my house for a site visit to check out parking availability and turnaround space. Um, I hope that you guys didn't show up on the day that we had our daughter's graduation party and there were 65 people attending. 
Um, but I did provide the board with pictures depicting, number one, adequate parking and turnaround space, the walkway to the studio and the studio itself, <clears throat> my proposed sign that's within the dimensions of the code that um, Bruce Smith told me was two square feet. Um, also in the pictures, it shows that we have a two-car garage and off-driveway parking for two other vehicles. Um, if my permit is approved, I believe that this will provide ample parking and turnaround space. My hours of operation would be from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., Sunday through Saturday. When I'm home, when I'm not home, the studio would be closed. I would hope to open April 1st and close October 1st, which would be six months out of the year. Um, and the other the only other bit of information that I had was um, that I spoke with Dan and Sarah Boxer, who attended last month's meeting, and I showed them the driveway and the turnaround space, the sign, the studio, and they had verbally agreed to me that they would send a letter to the board declaring that they were rescinding their opposition. Yes, we've received a letter from them basically indicating that so long as those, the conditions that we talked about last time were met. They had no, no further opposition. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions for the applicant? I had one, my memory, there was a, an article this morning in the newspaper about Alzheimer's disease, and I, I think I'm on the... I read that too. Yeah. Um, my recollection was the volume of uh, business that you, you said you sold, was it 300, 500 stones? Oh, just over 200, 200. this summer, oh. in four months' time. Thank you. And go ahead, I'm sorry. Um, sign is going to be for se a seasonal sign. It's going up for a period of time, and it'll come down when the business, or is Correct. it all year round? You, no, it would come down seasonal. Okay. seasonal. As far as you know, it's on your property, not on a setback from the road? My property. It's on your property? Mm -hmm. Well, it's not up yet. Where I will put it will be on my property. Okay. My son, that is, was, that my was son just, is just holding it. It was staged. It okay. He's just holding it. All right. It's not in the ground. And I'm sorry, what, were the, what was the basic season you wanted to run from? April 1st to October 1st. And is it really necessary to operate as late as seven? Is that a pro is, would it be a problem for you if we? Well, I, no, that would not be a problem. I, I'm thinking daylight. Daylight. I mean, could you live with 5:30 or six o'clock? I mean, generally, we've been asking the applicants that come before the board to try to, you know, keep it to business hours, um, unless that, you know. Pretty much, I think that most of the applicants that we've come that have come before the board recently for. Um, home occupation or home business, we've been saying 5 or 5.30. So I guess the question is, would that kind of limitation be a problem for you? I wouldn't have a problem with that. And you had success before by putting your product outside. Correct. And people stopping because they got a chance to see it. Correct. You're intending to have all of it available inside in the studio. Yes. Not outside. I believe I'm not allowed to display it outside. Okay. There is a small sample that's permanently attached to the proposed sign on, on either side. Okay. Is, that on the, is that depicted on the picture? Yes. Okay. And Bruce Smith told me that as long as it was permanently part of the sign, that would be okay. He also told me that the um, the directional for parking did not need to be included with the dimensions of two square feet maximum. In the arrow signs leading to the studio don't either. Is that true? Excuse me? The arrow signs that you have leading to the studio. Those aren't visible from the road. Not visible from the no, road. No, I've so walked up and down the road and I've driven by and none of those are visible from the road. It's all obstructed by bushes and rocks and fence. Ms. Welsh, I assume you're going to keep the uh, parking area clear during operating hours of your own vehicles so that other people can park there. Absolutely. 
And is it my understanding that you will operate seven days a week, is that correct? When I'm home. Yes, when you're home. Mm -hmm. And is there a problem with there being a sample outside? Was that According, my understanding from Bruce was that there is a problem with having a sample outside. At least right. that's the impression I got. From yeah, I did too. Was. I didn't realize it could be included in the sign. Um, well, he told me as long as it was a permanent, it was permanently affixed to the sign. Did the ordinance. I, I, I don't think the ordinance really addresses it. addresses that, and I'm not sure that that's a, uh, an issue. I, Bruce isn't here to comment, but uh, for example, on 77 across from <coughs> Nazarene Church, there's an antique shop that have birdhouses on display every day of the year. I mean, hanging yeah. uh, uh, lobster buoy type birdhouses, and, mm -hmm. and, that, and that's certainly highly visible. Highway 77. I know Bruce would pass by there. If it was an issue. I would think that that would have been dealt with there. And and there, they sell antiques and and such. And and it changes often. So I'm not sure the unless that was something that was specifically addressed at the last meeting because of locale. I'm not sure that that is an issue to have a sample outside. That was my understanding from the comments made by. Mr. Smith, last time that the product could not be displayed outside. Wasn't that your understanding, Ms. Welch? Products that were for sale yeah. would not be allowed to be displayed. Yeah. If, uh, if it was part of the sign, that's not for sale. And it is a miniature so version. There's the specific difference. It's not for sale. That, that's a, an example affixed permanently to the sign. And it's not for sale. Correct. No, and I just, mm -hmm. my only question mm -hmm. is the contradiction with this yeah. on yeah. 77, yeah. Why, why it, and those are clearly for sale. I mean, they have high price yeah. tags dangling on Absolutely. Them. I mean, that is clearly, that I, is a contradiction. It, it, it would be my <clears throat> desire that uh, how this proceeds that we clarify that point with the code officer and leave that as a, as a variable. I don't know if that's possible, but I'd like to, I'd like to see that addressed before not before, but I would like the, <clears throat> the ability for the code officer to make the final disposition on that. And, and that, in actuality, I don't believe is part of our, our uh, 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 obligation at this time to determine the, the finer points of, uh, of whether that's an issue. That's my opinion. If, if I may, Dr. Chapman, I, I concur. I think the safest thing to do is not to make the display a condition to the permit until we have clarification from Mr. Okay. Looks like Laurie has gone to make a phone call. I see. To ask Bruce about that. Is that where she's going? Yeah. It's an unusual procedure I haven't seen before. <laughs> Technology. <it's laughs> I think that's good. Real time comment. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> real time, real time feedback. Other questions, comments? Does the applicant understand the question? I, I just wonder. I do. You do understand the issue? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Basically, I think what we're saying is that the the signage uh, and the degree to which, if any, you can have product outside the house, I think, is really a code enforcement issue for Bruce Smith the code enforcement officer to address. And we're not necessarily trying to deal with that one way or the other today. Mm -hmm. um, I think part of the, what we discussed last time is we do want to see a sign pointing towards the parking where they should park. One of my other, cons w my concern last week was about traffic. I did go by your house. It's 6.30 this morning on my bike. And um, I did, uh, it, appeared to me that that's a relatively quiet stretch of the road and took away a lot of my concern about the traffic. The other part of two lights out further towards 77 is much busier. And the part you're on is pretty quiet along there. But I still think it's a concern with the cars parking on the street. And I would um, hope and I, I would, you know, I, I think part of that, what I'd like to see as part of the approval would be that parking be off street. And then if customers come and park on the street, you direct them to park off street. For sure. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's that's my was my primary concern. 
And as long as the sign complies with the ordinance, you know, that's an issue for the code enforcement officer to deal with. So any other further comments or questions for the applicant? I just talked to Bruce. Yeah. And he said that as long as the example was permanently affixed to the sign, that was fine. Okay. There was not supposed to be anything on display. Okay. And he said he discussed that with him. So that's, that's really basically giving you a heads up as to the way the code enforcement officer looks at it. I have an additional question. The hours of operation, um, the daylight hours, 10 to 7, I assume you don't get a, a huge portion of your business at one particular time of the day versus another. Maybe around lunchtime. Maybe around lunchtime. My, my guess would be the weekends would probably be the Weekends. Highest, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a seasonal business, and my, my take on this is your, your hours are less than the business at the end of Two Lights Road, uh, which is open later. And, um, I'm not sure how late the yeah, lobster shack it's, it's is open, past, but... It's past 7. So yes, it is. I, 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 don't, I don't see any big volume changes on that road in terms of safety. I, I guess I don't have a concern, is my, my point, about the hours of 10 to 7. Thank you. Other questions, comments for the applicant? Yep. All right, we'll give you an opportunity to rebut if anyone objects. Uh, anyone else that would like to speak in support of the application? <clears throat> okay, anything else you would like to add to it? If you could come to the podium, please. It's, it's not just for me, it's for the view, viewing audience. Hello. Like yes. You might know something about that. <laughs> no, not a thing. <laughs> my hair is a little bit more brushed, but I just wanted to come by for Carrie Lynn just because she, ha she does do a really nice job, um, and she's very respectable, and I know that she will, if there is any kind of an issue ever in the future, I'm sure she is going to scale back her hours if it becomes a problem. Um, but I think she'll be doing a good job at policing herself. So I just wanted to throw my support behind her. And where do you re reside in relation to the applicant? Uh, well, I have lived in two different homes in that area. I'm currently living over in Brentwood. I see. But just that for the last month. So. Great. Yeah, but for Thank the you. past three years, I've been in her neighborhood. Thank you. With Rob. If I may. Sure. As citizen Robert Chatfield, uh, my house actually abuts the Welch house, so I've, I've seen the amount of traffic that comes through for this, and it's not, no additional traffic is generated from this business. It's, she relies upon the traffic that's already existing through that area. Uh, in terms of parking, the driveway has held six cars while a half-court basketball game's been going on, so I'm, I'm well aware that there's room to turn around within that. Nobody's ever backed out of that driveway who's pulled into the driveway from what I've seen, and I would have no objection to the business being open until 7 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi, I'm Mary Page. I live at 172 Two Lights Road. I also abut Carolyn's property. And again, we have no problem with this. Um, it's just a nice little <clears throat> business she's got going here, and it's wonderful. No problem with traffic. Nothing's generated, and we have be a good thing. Thank you. Thank you. Any further comments from the audience? Applicant, anything else? I have no further comments. Any other questions from the panel? To <laughs> applicant, before we close the public presentation portion. This may have been covered, but it would certainly be okay to reiterate it if it was. I, I apologize if it was, but under the uh, ordinance, there are several criteria. Uh, and want to make it clear that, that we're in understanding of this, and that is that no one other than you will be employed or in, involved in, in this. Is, uh, it reads, no one who is not a resident of the dwelling unit shall be involved or employed in the business or professional use. Just myself and my family. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, and they, well, the chairman possibly should go over these at some time, but at, at, at uh, <clears throat> Maybe you already have, but there won't be any deliveries of any sort uh, regarding 
construction items. Uh, Deliveries? Uh, yes, to, no. to, to make the items. No. Okay. None whatsoever. And <clears throat> the business shall not produce. Uh, you said you manufacture these at, at your location. Yes. Okay. Uh, just for clarification only. <clears throat> Excuse me, that the uh, business shall not produce any odors, fume, dust, glare, noise, electrical interference of any sort, <clears throat> or any far, uh, uh, other than produced by normal residential use. No. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions of the applicant? Okay, I'm going to close the public portion of the discussion and. Um, We'll now take discussion from the um, panel as to their thoughts, comments about the application. If I may, Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'd like to take up uh, from last month, and I guess my take on this particular application is that we have a, uh, a citizen who's been a citizen, I believe, for 23 years uh, at this location uh, who wants to uh, have a home business which in its essence has been going on for three years um, and uh, the, the business has zero or minimal impact on the environment um, and I think uh, it's not a safety issue I think it's a seasonal uh, uh, business and um, uh, I see nothing wrong with their application any other comments What I was referring to earlier is, is actually mentioned under home occupation, but since she is producing these materials at home, I thought it was relevant that we do clarify that. Make sure that was, you met the criteria for that. You want to just give us a cite for that, Dr. Chapman? Sorry? The citation, the, you were referring to the definition of home business? Right. There, there are two separate definitions, home occupation and home business. She's applying under home business. I was citing from home occupation simply because she does produce the materials uh, she stated, I believe, in her, in her garage with supplies and whatever. And it appears if, if that is involved that it is not an issue in her case. Yeah, I just note for the, um, just to clarify an earlier point, that the definition of home business, um, which is in page eight of the ordinance, says that there shall be no outdoor storage of equipment or materials. So that just is the basis for Mr. Smith's position on that. Further comments about the application? My only concern, I think, at this point, originally I had concerns about traffic and where there was going to be parking after viewing the property and also seeing the photographs today. I'm more comfortable about the adequacy of the parking that you have in your, in your parking area there and with the signage and also with your diligence to make sure people stay off the road when they park. I think we'll be okay on that score. Um, the other issue is generally we've uh, limited or asked folks that come before us recently anyway to limit their hours operation to about 5 or 5.30. You've indicated um, a, uh, that you prefer to go to 7 but you could live with 5.30. Um, I can live with, in my, I'm okay with 7 o'clock assuming that you're operating during just those months of April 1st through October 1st when it's light to 7 o'clock at night. And if that's the, your intention and you're okay with us approving this for operations during those months, during those hours, I don't have a problem with that. So I just wanted to confirm that, in fact, you're okay with us approving the oper hours of operation or the months of operation from April 1 to October 1st. Until 7 p.m. That's fine with me. Okay. Any further comments? Okay. 
Um, as I understand the application, it's basically for the, uh, the months of operation from October, uh, April 1st through October 1st, hours of operation 10 to 7, seven days a week with off-street parking. Um, I don't believe there's any other proposed limits on the um, operation other than what are expressed by the statute or the ordinance, uh, which we've already discussed. So with that understanding of the application, um, we have to go through each of the multi-part tests to determine whether or not this uh, is approved. And I guess before I get to the multi-part test and start taking votes on that, does anyone have any further comments or questions or discussion about the application, clarifications? Uh, I'd just like to uh, mention that uh, after reviewing last month's uh, video, a lot of discussion was based on concern for traffic uh, hazards, potential hazards. Uh, the, uh, I understand that that is a concern for any home business, and, and we certainly look at that. Uh, the ordinance specifically uh, addresses increase in uh, vehicular traffic due to the business. Uh, based on the knowledge that I have of reading and, and listening is, is that the business will not increase any vehicular traffic. There is also uh, in itself, I don't think it's probably going to attract any additional traffic. Uh, it'll possibly uh, uh, attract stoppage in that area. The other, so from an or ordinance standpoint, I, I don't think that the traffic increase is going to be relevant. Uh, there was mention of parking in the driveway versus off street or on edge of street parking. Uh, Bruce isn't here to comment on this, but I, uh, I know that it was mentioned at the last meeting that, that we can't dictate where people park and, and even the, the the home business owner cannot dictate where people park. People are going to park where they want to park. Uh, but there is also the ability for that to be, if it does create a problem, that that can be identified and discussed with the code officer. This has happened in the past. And I, I don't know, but I believe that was mentioned, that if, if, if that is, does become a problem, then it can be reported. So based on those two bits of information, which are the two primary concerns, I don't have a problem with the home business as such. I think the, the ordinance clearly <coughs> states that it, there's a, that, that home businesses, as long as they're controlled and meet all of the criteria, are, are sanctioned. And in, in my mind, this business does meet all of the criteria. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion before we move to addressing each of the elements of the statute? Okay. With that said, I'll close the discussion and we'll move over to vote on the multi-part test to determine whether this can be approved. The first question is, does the proposed use create hazardous traffic conditions? Strike that. Let me rephrase it. Are they, the, we need a vote. Uh, in favor or opposed to the following question. The proposed use will not create hazardous traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. All in favor of that? Unanimously in favor. The proposed use will not create unsanitary conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air, or other aspects of its design or operation. All in favor? Unanimous in favor. The proposed use will not adversely affect the value of adjacent properties. All in favor? Unanimous. The proposed site plan and layout are compatible with adjacent property uses and with the compre comprehensive plan. All in favor? The design and external appearance of any proposed building will constitute an attractive and compatible. Um, well, that one is not applicable to this particular request. <coughs> Um, just one second.
the square footage occupied by the business or professional use shall occupy an area no greater than 20% of the floor area of the existing structure of the dwelling unit. Not sure if we addressed that in our examination of the qu of the issues. Have you looked at that question, ma'am? Yes, I have, and it has been answered. Is that in the application? In the original. It is on the application. Eight point five percent. Eight point five percent. Thank you. All in favor of that finding? Unanimous. All signs shall comply with the sign ordinance. All in, all in favor of that. And there will be no outdoor storage of equipment or materials. All in favor of that finding. So we have basically affirmative findings on all seven elements of the, um, of the statute to approve the home business. Um, so at this point in time, if I could have a motion to approve. The home business is applied for by the applicant. Well, I'll take a stab at that. Um, in the matter of the application for a home business uh, conditional use permit of uh, Ms. Carolyn Rand Welch, who resides at uh, 168 Two Lights Road, residential zoning district A, identified tax map U15, lot 67, that said that permit be uh, approved. Uh, with the applications, with the conditions of uh, seasonal operation from April 1 through October 1, and hours of operation uh, from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Very good. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor of that motion? Motion carries unanimously. Congratulations. Thank you. You're welcome. Good luck. That's kind of funny. Yeah, we will. Ari, do you need this? Um, Bruce, we should have one for the file. Yeah. Miss Welch. I'll take both. Miss Welch, oh, you take one of those. And we'll we need one for the file. And one for yeah. The you. That's one for you. One for the file. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other new business to come before us tonight, Lori? Okay. No other communications. You have one step. Great. Good. Motion to adjourn. I'd like to make a comment first. Uh, sure. If I, if I may. This isn't often the case where I, I was not at a meeting and was, after the fact, reviewed the minutes and watched the videotape critically, and I want to uh, commend Lori, as always, on an outstanding job. The, the, the minutes were dead on to the video recording. And I was, I, I didn't even need to watch the video recording. The minutes were, were that detailed and that accurate. I, as always, you do an outstanding job. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I thought they were very detailed. I, we should have you stay home more often, I guess. <laughs> okay. Well, I would like to concur. I would appreciate more advance notice with regard to the video, because I didn't realize in this meeting, I didn't get this package until Saturday, and I was out of town until Monday. And there was no email communication. I don't know what day I sent it out. Jay, Jay got it Wednesday. I think I sent it out Monday or Tuesday. I, uh, I got an email last week it, it, from you saying saying to review the video. If you but would. Bruce also sent an email out a week or two before saying yeah, he that's wasn't going to be here. Of. And yeah. he alluded to in his memo that Reviewing you needed the video. to see the I, tape. I've had no communication. What, what, what is, what's your email address? And I can verify that. I think that's no, what I have. Received no communication. What I will do, and, and you know, that's funny because I believe I did a return receipt too. Maybe I didn't on that one. I don't know, but I'll, I'll send you an email tomorrow to verify. I actually didn't we, know about it until Carrie Lynn asked me at 6 o'clock tonight about coming to this, and I had just gotten my mail because it was on the bottom of the fax. Yeah, one other thing is if when Lori sends out that notice, if people can try to respond to everybody, reply all. So. We all know who's coming and who's not coming. I think that would be helpful. Because um, I don't think I it knew until I got here whether or not we were going to have a quorum. And it would just be helpful if everybody would just try to keep the whole, the whole panel informed as to what's going on as far as attendance. So, so reply all, not reply Sunday. 
I would say on whether or not you're going to be there, reply all. So we all know what's, what's up. You know, I think. So we don't have to count on Lori. Let's